Hi, uh, this is Ivadi X from the Candid Frame. Welcome to another video. And uh, today I'm going to make a really short one, but it's going to be on a very important topic, which is light. Uh, I wrote this book called Chasing the Light, Improving Your Photography Using Available Light. So for me, paying attention to the light made all the difference in my photography. And it's something that I, I stress often to, to my students or anytime I get an opportunity to write or talk about photography. And I wanted to do that today. Um, with a lot of street photography, unfortunately, it seems like a lot of photographers forget to pay attention to the quality of light. And just like any other type of photography, lighting is, is key. You can have something very interesting happening in front of the camera. Uh, it can, you know, have some wonderful gesture. Um, you know, you can create a wonderful composition around putting together all these disparate elements and, and combining it into the frame. But there's something about when a photographer is doing all of that, but they also are aware of what's happening with the light and they take advantage of it. And if you take a look at the images, images that are in the Flickr pool currently, I really want you to, to, to pay attention to images where the photographer is really paying attention to the light. It's just not sort of this tertiary element uh, in the overall shot. It's a real critical component in the success of the photograph. And I chose three photographs to sort of uh, talk a little bit about that idea. So I'm going to start off with this image by Suresh uh, Naganathan. Um, he was using a Fuji X100S shot at 1 500th of a second at f8 at ISO 5000. And this is obviously um, a backlit silhouette image of this, of this figure and against what seems to be some artificial light sources, or maybe some fluorescent or, or neon tubes, and they have what seem to be these animal figures. It looks like a turtle and a rabbit um, that are juxtaposed against those elements in the background. And for me, this shot is all about the light and the color and that repeating pattern and the graphic of this of this profile of this figure juxtaposed against the silhouettes of these animals. I think it's just a wonderful, wonderful shot and it, and it goes to point out that you know you always need to have your camera with you especially at night so many of the photographs that we see in the flicker pool when it comes to street photography is shot during the day and a good percentage of them seem to be shot in the middle of the day and it's a shame to think that photographers when they when they see that the sun is go, goes down that they put away their camera and they don't think that you know photography at night is really a viable option and it is, especially now with the ISO performance of these cameras. I mean, he's shooting here at ISO, you know, 5000. But despite the presence of noise in the image, I think it's a successful image. And this technology provides us an opportunity to make photographs where just even 10 years ago, it would have been near impossible to pull off a quality image using strictly available light. Now we can sh shoot at astronomical high ISOs and make images work. And I think this image works um, beautifully, despite the fact he's using a very high ISO. The noise that's present here doesn't bother me at all because he so effectively uses light he uses the repeating pattern. He uses color contrast. He uses all those things that we would typically use when we're shooting out in the daytime to his advantage in this photograph. Now here's a second shot by Matthew Lilly, shot again with an X100S uh, at 1 250th of a second, F16, ISO 800. Now Matthew here is dealing with more dappled light. It's not as low light as the first situation, but it nevertheless is challenging light. And he has this dappled light uh, that is hitting the subject in this coat and this hat, and it really makes the makes the shot. If this scene had been photographed in just complete shade, the shot would have a completely different feel. It would be very flat. It would lack any sort of contrast and pop even if it was well exposed. So you can see here how, you know, with the exposure that all this stuff here in the background is just flat, it's sort of dull, and it's this dappled light that's hitting this figure that makes it. And it's just great in that it hits, you know, some nice points on, on him, especially on the hat, on the edge of his face, on the edge of the collar, on different areas of the coat. And the quality of the light makes the image that much more interesting. Um, I like working with dappled light 
because of that, because it can elevate what otherwise could be a very flat, uh, very sort of boring lighting and makes it into something really interesting if you find the right subject. And I think that he does that here with the subject here. Um, when you find pockets of light like this, uh, it's a good idea to just sort of camp out and just see what different characters or what different elements come into the frame. Don't don't just assume that this guy may be the best subject that you'll find in this light. He very well may be, but the light is so good, you just sort of have to wait. And hopefully this is a location where you get a good amount of traffic of people moving in and out. So you can try your hand at having different subjects that will walk in and out of the light that you can take advantage of. And will hopefully result in, in shots where some background elements like this cab um, won't be in the frame. I mean, here, you know, the cab is a little bit distracting, but because it's underexposed and lacks color saturation, it's not that big of a problem. Lastly, here's a shot by Simon uh, Hussein, shot with an EOS 550D at one thousandth of a second, F8 ISO 200. And this is a shot where it's all about the light, isn't it? It's some high contrast light, looks like it's probably um, shot midday. Uh, but look at how he uses that to his advantage. Usually during the middle of the day, the sun is overhead, which results in light that is unflattering for shooting people. You get those shadows underneath the eye, eyebrows, uh, the brow, the nose, the chin. Um, it's the kind of light most people say sucks and you shouldn't even bother shooting. But if you pay attention to the light and the shadows, Man, can you make some phenomenal shots. And I think that this shot is, is, is so remarkable for not only the way that he uses the light, but how he builds it around the shadows. This, this person's outfit here and everything about him just stands in stark contrast to this inky black that surrounds, that surrounds him. He just pops out of the frame. And I love how you include this element here in terms of this bike uh, with this sort of platform for carrying equipment. You have this barrel here. And I love this area right up here in the corner, this sort of, this little bit of highlight that breaks up all this blackness that, that's here. I think that's, this is really key for me in terms of serving as a counterpoint for everything that's happening here in the frame. Um, it, it makes the image really balanced for me, which I really, really love. And I love finding scenes like this. If I find a situation where I'm dealing with this high contrast, and it's a space where I'm going to get traffic, I will camp out here and I will just wait and slowly build my photograph, you know, by moving and changing my position, focal length, and most importantly, waiting for different characters or interesting elements to come in and out of the frame. But it's built first and foremost on paying attention with what's happening with the light. It makes all the difference in the world. So what I want to encourage you to do is take a look at the images that are in the Flickr pool and pay close attention to those photographers who are really using the light and take the time to share with them that you like the photograph. Don't just star it, make a comment as to why you like those images and use those images as references for um, the shooting that you're gonna do this weekend. Um, pay attention to the light, pay attention to the shadows, see where that leads you use the light, see the light, and walk in the direction where you have interesting light, interesting shadows, dappled light, all of that stuff. Use that and make your choice of subject based for, first and foremost on the lighting itself. And don't just hunt around for, for, for subjects and make the same kinds of photographs you make all the time. Use the light and discover how you can see completely differently as a result. So thanks for joining me. Um, Please, if you haven't already joined the joined the Flickr pool, please do. All you have to do is go to the Candid Frame group, ask to be added, and I'll be glad to do that. And uh, if you haven't haven't listened to the Candid Frame before, uh, visit me at thecandidframe.com and listen to a podcast which features some great conversations uh, with photographers. I have this wonderful interview with uh, Colin Westerbeck, which is who is the author of Bystander, the uh, a brief uh, a history of street photography. It is the Bible of street photography books. And uh, if you haven't picked up a copy, you should. It's only available used for the most part, but it's well worth the investment. Uh, check out that interview. And again, you can find it at thecandidframe.com. All right, guys, thanks a lot for joining me and I will see you next time.